You will have heard of Dr. Henry Jekyll. You will have heard appalling things. I tell you this, he was my friend and he was a seeker of truth. The radical theories, the life altering drugs were part of a surge to illuminate the elements of goodness and evil which are inherent in every human personality. Henry Jekyll believed he had found a way to control those separate elements, not merely for the furtherance of science, but for the relief of human sorrow and suffering. He entered my life as a brilliant young scientist and became as dear to me as my own child. I came to feel the exhilaration of his knowledge and the profundity of his suffering as though they were mine. I came to understand Henry Jekyll. In a very real sense, his passion is consistently reenacted within every one of us. He's beyond help, Henry. And therefore we treat him like an animal? He is a man. He has emotional responses as sensitive as any of ours, but the memory, the mind which allowed him to express his emotions rebels now and refuses to serve him. I know there is a means to reintegrate mind and emotion. There must be. Your it's colleagues possible. tell me your theories are infinitely more dangerous than he is. Dangerous? They say you're trespassing on hallowed ground when you experiment with the human mind. My colleagues are cowards, afraid of what they don't understand. How can we call ourselves civilized unless we are prepared to help him and every wretched soul like him? He's lost, Henry. Lost to himself and to the world, you will never reach him. Well, I have to try. You have tried everything. Not true. I am at the very point of perfecting a formula, a combination of rare drugs I that if my, your tenacity, if my theories Henry, are... But I question your philosophy. Do you seriously believe your drugs can change what God has set in motion? Yes. It can be changed. Sir Danvers, we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Lost in the darkness, silence surrounds you. Once there was morning, now in this night If I could reach you I'd guide you and teach you To walk from this darkness Back into the light silence please try to hear me I'll keep you near me till night passes by I will find the answer I'll never desert you I promise you this till the day that I die. Good night, Father. Of day. It's society's mask, it's society's way, and, and the, the truth is that it's all a facade. There's a face that 
we hide till the night time appears. And what's hiding inside behind all of our fears is, is our, our true self, self locked inside, inside the facade. Every day, people in their own sweet way like to light a coast of hate, and be one day. Playing the same But there's one thing I know And I know it for sure This disease we've got Has got no ready cure And I'm certain Life is terribly hard When your life's up to sun Look around you I have found You cannot tell by looking Whether you're happy or sad Look around you I have found You cannot tell by looking And the surface What is lurking there beneath it That face now I'm prepared I bet you what you see Is nothing to get Cause man's a master of deceit what is a sin, it's a secret A lie will tell you is true It's that each man you meet on the street Is it one man, but two Nearly everyone you see like him and her And you and me pretends to be a pillar of society A model of propriety Sobriety and piety Who shudders at the thought of notoriety Also in attendance, His Grace, the Bishop of Basingstoke. Yes. The Right Honourable Sir Archibald Proops. Yes. Lord Savage, Lady Beaconsfield, oh. and General Lord Glossop. Glossop? Mm. Glossop? <laughs> and yourself, Mr. Stride. Simon Stride, Honorary Secretary, respectfully recording the order of business. I'm already late for two other board Let's meetings. Get on with it. Henry, Dr. Jekyll, the sole purpose for our extraordinary meeting is to permit you to explain the very unusual request that you previously submitted to us in writing. Uh, please. 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 My dear Lady Beckinsale, please! Dr. Jekyll's case is of particular interest to me, as you all know. Let us therefore allow him to submit his request this one last time. Distinguished governors, I am obliged to thank you in advance for hearing me out in this matter of vital interest to any enlightened member of society. Hey, Dr. Jekyll, let us dispense with the niceties and proceed with the matter at hand. Certainly, Mr. Stride. Forgive my good manners. <laughs> Distinguished 
Governors, in each of us, there reside two separate natures, two distinct personalities. One dark, one light, one good, one evil. It is the curse of mankind that these two extremes should be constantly at war. Yes. Now, my friends, please. Henry, to the point. It is clear to me now that we have the power to divide this primitive duality of man into its separate components, to isolate what is functional from what is dysfunctional, and to control these elements forever. That's My amazing. experiments with various animals have convinced me that the separation, the behavioral control of which I speak, is more than theoretical, it is achievable. I must be permitted now to test my procedure and my formula on a human subject. What? What? A human soul? To be prodded and tested like a laboratory rat? Yes, madam. Yes, yes gentlemen. I ask that I be permitted to select a patient who will help me to prove my theory for the betterment of all mankind. A volunteer, I hope. A volunteer mental patient? Hmm. Very good. <laughs> a man whom society has already abandoned is hopeless. An inmate of this prison. Prison? No, Henry. And you would it's perform your body. surgery on this pitiful creature's brain? No! As I have already explained to this august body, my treatment takes the form of rare drugs, precisely combined, administered through hypodermic injection. What? There are doomed broken souls in a thousand asylums, left there to rot for the lack of a plan. In the name of compassion and medical science, I can save many lives. If you'll give me one man, I tell you now the church will never sanction it. Sacrilege, lunacy, blasphemy, heresy. We're treading on dangerous ground. In legal terms, I'd say extremely unsound. Your lack of humility strikes me as odd. What makes you think you have the right to play God? speaks for all of us when he says you're playing God. There's such a thing as ethics over which you ride roughshod. You're a doctor, not a savior. Dr. Jekyll for a start. But I judge from your behavior, you can't tell the two apart. Dear Mr. Stride, I'm simply a scientist. I have a code to which I remain true. I don't presume to the stature of moralist. I leave pretension like that, sir, to you. Excuse me. Henry, I've always encouraged your enterprise, and I've been hopeful that you would succeed. But given the problems my colleagues can visualize, I see no choice but for you to concede. I know my fate is yours to choose, but if I fail, the world will lose when I am on the threshold of success. I beg you, governess, you must say yes. But you see, I'm not playing games! Just give me the opportunity! This whole thing's too bizarre! Open up your eyes and see me! Unless you listen to Henry! Can't you see? You're on your If ever I needed for the justification for my work, gentlemen, you've just provided it! Just look at what has happened here! Mix anger with a touch of fear! The danger's all too crystal clear, just look at you! Our darker side keeps breaking through, observe it now in me and you! The evil any man can do must be controlled! I beg of you, I'll show you how it can be done! Here's a chance to take charge of our fate. Deep down you must know, tomorrow's too late. One rule of life we cannot rearrange. The only thing constant is change. The only thing constant is change.
Distinguished colleagues, your verdict, please. All those in favor, say aye. <laughs> All those opposed, nay. So Danvers, I abstain. By five votes to none with one abstention, Dr. Jekyll's extraordinary proposal is rejected. Thank you for your time, Doctor. I am shocked to the core of my being. Well, who's going to take me to luncheon? Bessie? No, Teddy, I've heard enough demented babbling for one day. <sighs> this is England, you know, <laughs> not the continent. I'm profoundly sorry, Henry. I did try to prepare you. Well, you finally convinced them that you're mad. They s set themselves up to be friends of medicine. Friends of knowledge. They are hypocrites, John, every last one of them. Yes, but they're powerful hypocrites. You should exercise greater caution. I can't afford caution. Henry! Henry. You are obsessed by your father's condition. Of course I'm obsessed. He's my father. I draw my life from him. The flesh on my bones is his. I know I could save him, and the thousands of others who dwell in that same darkness, if they'd only let me. How can I pursue the truth when they can block each step I take? And you have come too far. Remember what you have at stake. But John, I know I'm right. I must let my vision guide me. I'm so weary of this fight. There's so little left inside me. If you know that you are right, then you've got to see it through. You've got to see it through. Seven years ago, I started out on this alone. Now it's alone, I'll see it through to its conclusion. Were they to judge what I am doing, they know nothing of the endless possibilities I see. It's ludicrous, I'm bound by their decision. Seems vision is a word, faith them If it mattered less, I'd treat them with derision. It's absurd. And yet, the fact remains. Those bastards hold <laughs> the reins. We were around here, you need cash in the bank, cause the houses round here are all flashy and swank, and the front bit is what's called a facade. This Jekyll fella think he is. Pertinence like that in the army would have earned him a good flogging. Mm. Stamp out any nasty signs of progress. A hey, general? Absolutely. He's tinkering with a man's soul. And I don't like it. He's lucky we're living in modern times. Today's penalties for heresy are not what they should be. Enemies of thank you, good lord, that we have legal represent modern times, your grace. Uh, 
if Jekyll's as clever as you say he is, what's he doing trying to save paupers and madmen? Exactly. <laughs> what possible use is that? I have lived in St. James for 60 years, and I've never even seen a pauper, let alone a madman. I think he's mad, if you must know. Danvers, we're talking about your future son-in-law, yes. and I think you're mad to let him marry your daughter. That's not Father's decision, Lady Beaconsfield. It's mine. Don't worry, Bessie. Whatever your opinion of him as a scientist may be, Emma assures me Henry Jekyll is impeccable husband material. Well, for a start, it is less than impeccable to be late for one's own engagement party. Shows a remarkable lack of style. Yes. <laughs> uh, Bessie, I... Comments on style should never be made by those who have none. <laughs> it's good. Mr. Patterson, thank you so much for being here. Your bracing breath of fresh air. Emma Carew, can this be you? What kind of man is this you have taken? Can you not see the kind of life that this would be? You are mistaken. Time to awaken before it's too late. Before you forever determine your fate. But Simon, you knew I had to be free. What I choose to do is decided by me. From the day my mother died, my father, full of good intentions, treated me as though I were a young child. Maybe his idea was just to wait until I grew up and then look at me and hope that I'd be her. It's easy to accept that from a father. He'd rather things remain the way they were. But when it comes to marriage, I must pick whom I prefer. I am not the weak young thing you're seeking, Simon. Someone 17, obedient and sweet. I am not the protege to waste your time on. Why did I know I'm you were gonna complete. say In Henry's eyes I see what I am meant to be. Henry Jekyll, you're a <coughs> You have robbed us of London's most lovely girl. I could turn to drink when I stopped to think what? Emma's marrying a doctor oh. instead of an earl. Poor oh, girl! <laughs> <laughs> ah, the late Dr. Jeff. My apologies, Sir Danvers. Happy to forgive a boy like Emma. I'm learning to anticipate you. We thought we might invite your wedding guests for the day after the ceremony, just to make sure the groom is in attendance. Never fear, I'll be there. The six weeks until the wedding will be the longest of my life. Well, your half hour this afternoon with the governors of St. Jude's was certainly the longest of my life. I have to take every opportunity that I am given to state my belief. Even though you antagonize the established authority in the process? Sir Danvers, your friends are not the established authority, merely the established prejudice. My friend Dr. Jekyll is a man of honor, Sir Danvers. But not of diplomacy. Ah. I was not aware the two were incompatible. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, oh. it's the fireworks. Fireworks! Ladies and gentlemen, do come along. Uh, Mr. Artisan, do you enjoy fireworks? If they're unavoidable. They are. Uh, now, Bishop, come along and have a glass of port. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. Speak to him. Miss Carew. Dr. Jekyll. Are you angry with me? No. You should be. I'm just happy you're here. I try never to miss any social occasion attended by Lady Beaconsfield. Mm. Is there a Lord Beaconsfield? Well, he died 30 years ago. Sensible fellow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My dearest Emma. You realize you're letting yourself in for a lifetime of these aggravations? Yes, I realize that. I cannot live by the same old clock that everyone else does. I realize that, too. But in all good conscience, I must advise you that I love you. Far too much to have you suffer the sort of life I have to offer. I must go on with the work I'm committed to. How can I not when my theories are true? And I will prove if I'm ever permitted to. Things are not wrong just because they are new. I adore you, always have done, always will do. And your dreams 
yours are mine. I will always understand whoever heard the path you've planned. Our lives will intertwine. Who knows where my work will lead me? Nowhere where you will not need me. Oh, please, I beg you, heed me. Just don't leave me on my own. The only thing I fear is the unknown. I see past the horizon, sure of my way where I am going. But where's the prize I have my eyes on? Where there is just a no knowing and windy space. Turn to but you, you know who I am. Take me as I am. Look in my eyes. Who do you see there? Someone you know, or just a stranger? If you Emma. Father. <clears throat> You're being asked for. So are you, Dr. Jekyll, though I can't imagine why. Well, I fancy people will be curious to know why the two main reasons for this party are resolutely hiding from it. <laughs> Come along, Henry. Let's test your theories against these other lesser fireworks. <laughs> I hope you gave him the scolding he deserves. Oh. Did Mother's scolding ever change you? Oh, look, I'm not alone in finding Henry's behavior difficult to tolerate. You don't have to tolerate it, Father. He's marrying me, not you. Emma, don't you understand? It's you that I'm concerned Father, for. Father, don't be. You should be concerned for him. I... He's the no, one in need. I'm only trying to protect you. What else would you have your father do? I think I would die if any harm should come. 
I'm scared, my child, because I'm going to lose you. I find it very hard to let you go. If you tried to, you could never lose me. Darling father, I still love you more than you will ever know. But if we want our love to grow, I know, in time, I have to let you go. We mustn't be afraid. Of letting go. Oh, I love you, Father. I love you. He is mad at us all because of you, girls. For water on her? Oh. We are here. Welcome to the Red Rats, gentlemen. How good of you to pay us a call. Leading friends to a life of debauchery. Mr. Otterson, is it not? <laughs> why, John? Why, John? Why, John? <laughs> As you can see, Gwenny, these two youngsters desperately need something to drink. Eating friends for life of debauchery. I can turn to drink, and I will, I think. Oh, why on earth have you brought me here? <laughs> you need the relaxation, Henry. He is right, Henry. You need relaxation. Table one and champagne for Mr. Otterson's party. The show is about to start, Henry. You will love the new girl. <laughs> in this place is they wouldn't be caught right. dead here. Well, 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 Lucy, it's about time you got here. Oh, look who it is, Her Royal Majesty, Queen of the Red Rats. That's right. You are in trouble, girl. We're running late, and the spider is in a foul mood. Oh, that'll make a nice change. Don't upset him, Lucy. You know what the spider can do. Oh, I suppose you've been up in Hyde Park again listening to all them speeches. What's wrong with that? I like to listen. I just want to learn. Oh, oh, come here, I'll learn you something. Such a fool, filling your head with all that rubbish. All you need to learn is to be on time. Now you get your ass out onto that stage. You got two minutes. I don't know who you girls think, think you are. are. Think you are. Well, don't worry, Gwynnie, nor do we. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be nobody than her. That's right. She's up, Lucy. Cow. You're the nicest nobody I know. <laughs> Look at me and tell me who I am, Lucy. Why I am, what I am. Just call me a fool, and it's true. I am. I don't know who I am. It's such a shame. I'm such a sham. Oh, the 
stage. Where were you and why were you late? What does it matter? It won't happen again. If it does, it'll happen to a dead girl. And I mean that. I know you do. Lucky for you, I'm in a good mood tonight. I'll be up to your room later on to show you just how good. Lucky me. Be good to him, Luce. Some knows quality when they seize it. <laughs> Look, I wonder, is there anything that I can do? Yes, you can tell me if the rest of my face is still there. It appears to be. It's a lovely face, look after it. I really would like to help you if I could, please. I mean, you helped me. I did? Yes. How? With your song, good and evil, it made me think that we all have to make choices, don't we? Some of us do. So what's your specialty then? I'm a doctor. <laughs> and tonight you made me realize that I can be the patient, too. <laughs> You're serious. Well, yes, I am. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> it all sounds a bit weird to me. But whatever makes you happy. Here's to the night, here's to romance To those unafraid of taking a chance 
yet. I can see you're not up to the chase. But if you're ever in need, I am the girl in this. Well, this is the place. Come to me. It's getting late. I have to go. Any time, you never know. You need a friend. I mean simply that. A friend. You're a devil. You're a devil. There's no end to your life of debauchery. I'm going, John, <laughs> you. Certainly. Henry. But I was joking. <laughs> Well, thank you, John, for the relaxation. That's what it was. You never stop rooting over your damnable theories for one single moment. Oh, but I did discover something essential. What's that? My volunteer. Henry, you can't possibly. Where are you going? My offices. I'm going to work tonight. I must. I won't hear of it. You need rest, Henry. Henry, you must. Fool, how are you? Promise me you're not contemplating a volunteer from the Red Rat. Good he heavens, John. You think of me as such an unprincipled character. <sighs> Paul. Send him straight to bed. He must have rest. So must I. I'm going home. Quite right, sir. I'll do what I can. Anything more you need, sir? You could stir the fire, pool. Of course, sir. Then go to bed. I won't need you again this evening. Good night, sir. Pool. Sir? You knew my father in his best days. His mind and his spirit were extremely strong, weren't they? He was the finest gentleman I ever knew, sir. I must do it for his sake. Sir? Nothing. Good night. Good night, sir. Now there is no choice. I must put aside the fears I feel inside. There's no place to hide. So it comes to this. One great golden chance that only I can take. Now everything I fought for is at stake. To make the mark that only I can make. This is the moment. This is the day when I send all my doubts and demons on their way. 
every endeavor I have made ever is coming into play. It's here and now, today. This is the moment, this is the time when the momentum and the moment are in a rhyme. Give me this moment, this precious chance. I'll gather up my past and make some sense at last. This is the moment when all I've done, all of the dreaming, scheming, and screaming one. This is the day. See it sparkle and shine when all I've lived for becomes mine. For all these years, I faced the world alone. And now the time has come to prove to them I've made it on my September 14th. Three fifty six AM. I have started this alone, and I must finish it alone. I know now that I must use myself as the subject of the experiment. I must be wise. I must try to analyze each change in me, everything I see. How will it be? Will I see the world through different eyes? A warning light glimmering in red like crimson bloodshed shimmering in red beautiful and strange see the colors change before my eyes 
See how they dance and they sparkle like diamonds at night. Leading me out of the darkness and into the light. Three fifty eight AM. It is done. I have injected myself with five centiliters of the newly fused formula. Salty, bitter taste stings the gums. Warm. In the, in the gullet, a, a, a prickling heat spreading strongly through my veins. Slight feeling of euphoria. Lightheadedness. No noticeable behavioral differences. <laughs> now, the die is cast. Nothing left to do. <laughs> Time alone can prove my theories true. Show the world that. Dear God. What's this? Something is happening. I can't explain. Something inside me, a breathtaking pain, devours and consumes me and drives me insane. Ah! 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 Suddenly, uncontrolled, something is taking a hold! Suddenly, agony! Killing me, killing me! Suddenly, out of breath! What is this? Is this death? Suddenly, look at me! Can it be? Who is this creature that I see? Four o'clock, and all's well. Unexpected development. Free! This is feeling of power and pride. I've never known. I feel alive. Where does this feeling of power derive? Making me know why I'm alive. Like the night is a secret. Sinister, dark, and unknown. I do not know what I seek yet. I'll seek it alone. I have a thirst that I cannot deprive. Never have I felt so alive. There is no battle I couldn't survive. Feeling like this. Feeling alive! Like a moon and a nigma. Lost and alone in the night, damned by some heavenly stigma, but blazing with light. It's the feeling of being alive, kill with evil but truly alive. It's a truth that cannot be denied. It's the feeling of being Edward Hyde. I'm so sorry.
sorry, Miss Peru. Perhaps next week. No, Paul. I won't come again, not until Dr. Jekyll asks for me. Emma. Father. Oh, he asks about you constantly, Miss Peru. He but he's not seen anybody, not for weeks now. Because, because of, of his, his work. work. Yes, I know. Show him the flowers, Paul. And the nourishing things I brought, if you can get his attention. Say they are to remind him that there is more in his life than his work. Myself, for example. Emma, I thought you weren't coming here again until he emerges. I'm not. This is absurd. He's sacrificing everything valuable in this life to this experiment. The experiment is the most valuable thing in his life. After you! No! No, Father, before me. Oh. Now, I understand that. I... Are you coming along with me? Are you staying? I am coming along, of course. I'm just trying to persuade Mr. Utterson that he's wasting his time. I did not wish to alarm Miss Caruso, and it is hardly my place to criticize the doctor. But for more than a week now, he's been locked in that laboratory. I'm instructed to leave his meals at the door and go away. He's been alone in there all this time. Alone, sir? No. But if you're forbidden to admit anyone... I did not admit him, sir. The doctor must have let him in. I would not have admitted a man of that sort to the doctor's home. I saw him here just once, standing in front of the fire, staring at his reflection. He told me to clear out and not disturb him and the doctor again. But later, that same night... What? I heard the doctor or someone in the laboratory there, crying, weeping. The strangest sound you ever heard, sir. Paul! Paul! Sir! I have been ringing for a quarter of an hour. I want you to go to Mr. Bissett, the pharmacist now, and fetch me back these drugs now. Henry, good Lord, what has happened to you? Now! Poole, you look as if you're in the grip of the very devil. John, John, there is something you must do for me. There is a letter here for Emma, one for her father, and one for you. If ever I should be taken ill or go away for some time without otherwise alerting you, all you will need to know is inside these letters. If you should go away, what are you saying? I won't accept this. John, you are my lawyer. And more essentially, you are my friend. You must do this for me. You, my dear Henry, must re-examine your priorities. You have your work and nothing more. John, you are possessed. Please. What is your demon? You've never been this way before. You've lost the fire you built your dream Good day. on. There's something strange, there's something wrong. I see a change, it's like when hope dies. I who have known it for so long, I see the pain in your eyes. There was a time you lived your life, you never lived the way that you did. You had a plan, you chose a wife, you saw your world as her refuted. You had it all, you overall. To know just what they left for, but now it seems you don't at all. You have your work, nothing more. Father, you know Henry won't just walk away. The only way he knows is straight ahead. Emma, you've not heard a single word I've said. My fear is he's in over his head. He could lose control. And that I dread. There has been talk. They say he's gone too far. 
He's locked himself away in his own world, pursuing this insanity. This is work. It's more than work. He is obsessed. The man is driven. Time. I ask for more. His work's a crime to be forgiven. There's something strange. Unless time. I'm blind, I, no I see a change of a bizarre it's kind. He's chasing dreams he'll never find. He has his work and nothing more. He's obsessed. The man is driven. Young lady to see you, sir. Well, send her away. Indeed, sir. She's dressed little enough like a lady. No doubt she found your card dropped on the street somewhere. My card? Yes, sir. Well, then I will see her pool now, please. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, it's Miss Lucy. Lucy. Lucy Harris. Yes, I'm sir. the one that you and your friend. I remember. I remember. Oh. Would you please sit down? <laughs> so, what brings you here? You said if I ever needed a friend. Oh, yes, of course. God. Pretty, isn't it? Who on earth would do such a thing? A real English gentleman. Did a lovely job, didn't he? Just a moment. Some men are real skillful when it comes to causing pain. And you didn't go to the police? <laughs> the police? Yes. A girl like me making a complaint about a man like him? Yes. A rich man? <laughs> That's funny. I won't forget his name in a hurry, though. Hyde. Edward Hyde. Why, why come to me? You, you have family. I ain't got no family. You gave me your card. Of course I did, right? Never had someone like you be nice to me before. Yes. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. You'll soon feel more comfortable. 
I feel like a lady. You are a most extraordinary lady. Good morning. I peer through windows, watch life go by, dream of tomorrow. is holding me, keeping life at bay. I wander lost in yesterday, wanting to fly, but scared to try. But if someone like you found someone like me, then suddenly nothing would ever be the same. My heart would take wing, and I'd feel so alive if someone like you
I hope everything was to your satisfaction, Your Grace. Oh, very nice, yes. Sweet little girl, isn't she? Plenty of potential. Very, very nice, <laughs> yes. I'd um, like to see her again. Next week? Certainly, Your Grace. <laughs> Happy to oblige. Must make a pleasant change from all your charity work. <laughs> But, of course, we do not do it for charity. <laughs> oh. Yes. Wednesday, all right? Yeah, Wednesday, very, very <laughs> nice, yes. A goodbye for now, my dear. <laughs> Say cheerio mm? to his grace. <laughs> Never mind her. She is stunned by your generosity. Good. That is all. <laughs> Till Wednesday, then. Yes. Stay off! Was fällt dir ein? Ich hab dir nur so wünscht. <laughs> Wednesday, dearest. Your Grace, it warms my heart to know that romance still blossoms even in the sewers of London. Who are you, sir? What a pretty pair. The Romeo of the Claw and the Juliet of the Gutter. Though Juliet is a trifle young for such a disgusting old Romeo. How dare you, sir? Do you know who I am? Yes, yes, oh, Grace. I know exactly who you are. Eminent churchman and philanthropist, friend to those in need, particularly of the female gender and years still tender. Let me pass, not you know fool. Rupert the 14th, Bishop oh. of Basingstoke, a British is most distinguished, degenerate, oh. obscene, oh. corrupt, oh. and malignant immigrant! Oh. Immigrant! Oh. Immigrant! Oh. Immigrant! Oh. To wrap behind bars of the zoo, neat, unrampant, and free. Predators me by the prey they pursue. This time the predators me! Thus, like a raging desire, fills my whole soul with its curse. Burning with primitive fire, possessed and perverse. Well, they night. I'll thunder heaven and blind, sing from all the gods tonight. I'll take from all mankind. My friend Jekyll continued his dog journey. He would not tell us where he was going. Perhaps he no longer knew himself. The burden he placed on me was unbearable. I was a blind witness, allowed to hear his cries of anguish, forbidden to seek him, to understand, or to help. Forbidden to see or speak to him for weeks. Yet Jekyll had become like a son to me, not merely a presumptive son-in-law. Some kind of dark web was surrounding him and those connected to his work at St. Jude's. Could not allow Emma and Henry to get caught up in that web. Beat him up the hideous murder, profane religious murder. That poor old bishop, what a shock. He's walking with his 
daughter a moment prior to slaughter. The shepherd tending to his flock. He died in the London slum, a slave to martyrdom. He died without complaint. He's gone back home to God. It all seems very odd. Why should it be this mystery? Murder, murder in the nightmare. Murder, murder. It's a nightmare. Murder, murder. It's a right scare. Bloody murder in the night. Has taken this brave man from us. Friends, take what comfort that you can from us. Another one of us gone, Teddy. Irreplaceable. You know, Glossop. Yes? I'm happy to inform you that you're relieved of your duty, sir. All of them! Damned impertinence! Who in hellfire are you? Damn. In hellfire. Exactly! Ah. <laughs> uh. <sighs> That's another of you gone, Teddy. It's another murder, just like that other murder. That poor old General Glossip, dead. Last week that bishop coughed it, that bloke that Danny popped it, that fella must be off his head. That's due in the last four days. This killer has fancy ways. To kill outside St. Paul's requires a lot of fools. He hates the upper class. He must be on his ass. Things pull off it. The trucks. All but two of them, sir. You know, I could lose my license. When can I have the others? Tomorrow night, sir. What are they for? None of your bloody business! No, sir. Look, I'm of sorry. Of course not, sir. Are you all right, Dr. Jekyll? You don't seem to be yourself. I've been better, Bissett. I've been better. London has a killer on the loose. The very line on the other side will be the same thing. Okay, thank you. They've got the trail to make it. They've got the trail and jam it now. Burn it. Go to the pool and play it. Tell me for what's his name. There's all of you and play it. Claret, I expect a decent claret. Oh, Archie, you wouldn't know a decent claret if it poured itself down your shirt. <laughs> I certainly would. Oh, then why do you always serve that cheap swill when we <gasps> dine at your place? <laughs> cheap? Well, well, if it isn't faith, hope, and charity. You! And who in perdition are you, sir? Uh, no one you would know, Sir Archibald. Lady Beaconsfield. Your Lordship! Bessie, get inside. Sweet, how you hypocrites hang together. Scandalous. Step aside, you creature. This is my final admonition. And this is mine. <laughs> Come! Come on! Listen, my love, you really should be more careful wearing your real diamonds out on the street. You never know whom you might encounter. Please! 
Please. A difficult word for you to pronounce, isn't it, my lady? Must be the first time you've used it. Is that you? You're traveling? No. Escaping. Very wise. I only wish I could persuade Dr. Jekyll to do the same. Where will you go, Lord Savage? Oh, I'm telling her to know. Yes. Uh, Aberdeen, actually. Shh. No, no, I, I, I don't know what you heard, Danvers, but I did everything I could. I tried to save them, all of them. Tried like hell. Of course you did. That's a matter between you and God. God knows, and you know that you tried. Have a safe journey. Bad news from God, Teddy. October 6th, 10.45 p.m. We are here... We are here alone. Terrible. More terrible than any beast stalking its prey. What are you doing? Henry. Who let you in here? Who let me into the office? Ooh. Yes, the laboratory door was unlocked. I was desperate for some words. When you thought to find it spying in my journal. Henry! Henry, look at me. I cannot believe that either one of us has become so altered that we are unable to have a civil conversation. I understand your work is unprecedented and painful. I see what it is doing to you, now oh, to us. And yet I know you must move forward to believe in this so It's strong. gone beyond him. It's taken control of me like an addiction. And yet, and yet the truth, yes. the, 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 the truth is inside somewhere. I can't explain it to myself, much less to you. Shh, there's no need to explain anything. Never promised me the journey would be easy Please. or pleasant, my dearest. Only that we would take it together. When it's all began, we knew there'd be a price. Once upon a 
lost in love's embrace. There we found a perfect place once upon a dream. Once there was a time like no Still an open door once upon a dream, and I was unafraid. The dream was so exciting, but now I see it fade, and I am here alone. Don't abandon me. In God's name, Emma, I have never needed you more. And I do love you. I know that. And I will wait for you however long it takes. I will pray for you. When you October 7th, 1.30 a.m. The experiment is out of control. The transformations are beginning to recur of their own accord. The beast has taken a heavy toll, not only on me, who can't yet be saved, but on others. Who cannot? Am I just... John, would you please leave me alone? I must work. You must give me some answers first. What is the meaning of this document? John! Who is Edward Hyde? Why in God's name would you bequeath to him everything that you possess? No, those letters would be open only, only in the case of my... Only if you went away or became ill. You have gone away, Henry, and clearly you are ill. Who is Edward Hyde? A colleague! inextricably involved in this experiment. Should I be unable to complete it, he must have the wherewithal to continue this work. Henry. What? If I am to act as your lawyer John, and your please, friend, I, you must tell me everything. I have. Henry! I've told you everything Henry. that can be told, everything I comprehend myself, and now. And now I must ask you for an even greater favor. What? Tell me! 
Pacific Chemist has acquired a quantity of rare drugs for my immediate use. They will be delivered to your offices the instant he has them, and then you must bring them here. Now, please, no further questions, solicitor! John, John, I dare not leave this room until the final step has been accomplished. You know, you have to trust me. A few more days. I trust you with my life, and I suppose I must trust you with your own. Yes, old friend, my life is in the balance. Many lives are in the balance, all our lives. His life, too. He wreaks his vengeance upon the contemptible world. And then he disappears within me like the stain of breath upon a mirror. He has found his perfect hiding place. He is cruelty incarnate, everything that I have wanted to eradicate from man's nature. And yet, so wonderful is his love. Oh, life. What streak of madness lies inside of me? What is the truth my fears conceal? What evil force makes Edward hide of me? What darker side of me does he reveal? What is this strange obsession that's tearing me apart? Some strange, deranged expression of what's in Am I the man that I appear to be? Or am I someone I don't know? I guess a monster drawing near to me, becoming clear to see, will what I fear to be be so? the rain and see my tears run down the world of pain. I sit and watch the sky and I can hear it breathe a sigh. Think of him how we were and when I think of him then I remember, remember. In his eyes I can see where my heart longs to be.
is worth forgiving for. Now I realize everything worth living for is there. It is alive. This one is worth forgiving for. Now I realize everything. of yours. Oh. oh, for a moment I thought it was somebody else. Oh, for a moment it almost was. I have some rather sad news, Lucy. I have to go away for a little while. A friend and I have a little dispute mm. to settle. Be nice to him, Lucy. Be nice. Why, well, you are glad to see me? Oh, son. no, sir. Oh. I can always tell when you are lying, Lucy. When do you come back? Shouldn't take long. I will know where you are every moment that I am gone. And God help you if you're not waiting for me when I return. Mystery tale The frightened princess Doesn't know what to do Will the ghost come away? Will she will and to stay? Either way, there's no way to win I know there's a cost And I'm counting the cost My emotions are in a spin I don't know who's to blame It's a crime and a shame But it's true all the same It's, it's a, a dangerous game. No one speaks, not one word, but what words are I At the sound of your voice, at the moment your eyes meet mine, I am losing my mind, I am losing control, fighting feelings I can't define. It's a sin with no name, or more 
peace and no shame, fire, fury, and flame. If you live around here, lots of people I fear will make promises they will not honor, my dear. And the truth is, you end up getting scarred. There's a beast at the door, and he's wild and free, but we won't let him in, because we don't want to see what he is. Lurking right there. The facade. Henry? I'm afraid Dr. Jekyll is not available, and there's no point you waiting, Mr. Utterson. I don't expect the doctor any time soon. I am here under his... Leave me the drugs! And go. I will leave them only with Dr. Jekyll. Where is he? <laughs> well, <laughs> even if I told you, I'm quite certain you would not believe me. Either you tell me where he is, or I will send for the authorities. The choice is yours, Mr. Hyde. Yes, I know who you are. And I can see that Henry has good reason to be frightened of you. What have you done with him? What have I done with him? What has he done with me? Allow me to show you! You're not afraid of the truth, are you? Afraid of science? <laughs> <laughs> Destroy yourself. Perhaps. Only that I may save, redeem my father and the thousands of others who inhabit that same uninhabitable hell. I, I, I may, may be able to regain control. I is a part of me, John, freed from within, and, and now he has returned within where I could subdue him. But there is no time. I have one more, ta one more task, which you must accomplish for me. One more task. 
You see, Harris? You, you tell her that she must read it at once. The girl from read the red rock. Read it if necessary. She, she must leave oh. London immediately. Oh, her life also soul. hangs in the balance, as does mine. Is it... Is it your message I'm taking? Or his? John, if you knew him, you wouldn't ask. Go on! With, with these new ingredients, I have one final chance to save myself. To control him. God help you, my friend. God help us all! Somehow I have to get back to the place where my journey started. Find the course I charted when I first departed. Somehow I have to hang on to the vision that first inspired me, to the hope that fired me when the world admired me. I'll find my way back to the higher ground and see the view I saw before. I'll search the world until the answer's found and turn my despair around forever. I have to rebuild all the dreams that the winds have scattered From what fate has shattered I'll retrieve what mattered Somehow I have to go on to the evil has been defeated Till my work's completed I will not be cheated God No fear, sir. You won't disturb nobody. They're used to late visitors round here. This is from Dr. Jekyll. You are to leave London at once. Tonight, if possible. <coughs> Mary. My dear Miss Lucy, I regret more than I can ever express that my private misfortunes prevent me from ever seeing you again. I have found in you a tender and loving light during these past dark days. I hope you will accept the enclosed as a small repayment for the lesson you have taught me. Leave this place, I beg you, and begin again, secure in the knowledge that I shall never forget you. Henry Jekyll. You don't owe me nothing. I owe him. That is not of my concern, but I beseech you to do as he asks. I am sure it's for the best. Well, why didn't he come? Why did you? Because he is my friend. He's mine too. Believe it. Good night, then, and good luck. May you find a happier life elsewhere.
was for free along the way. A new start. That's the thing I need to give me new heart. Have a chance in life to find a new part. Just a simple role that I can play. to convince me to renew A new day bright enough to help me find my way A new chance One that maybe has a touch of romance oh, well. Can it be a chance for me? A new dream. I have one I know that very few dream. I would like to see that overdue dream, even though it never may come true. As true love, even so, although I never knew love, still I feel that one dream is all I do. The world, this one thing I want to ask of you, world, once before it's time. Dearest Lucy, <gasps> you weren't expecting me? No, sir. But who else can I turn to for sympathy, tenderness? You've had another visitor this evening. No, no, not really. Wasn't the doctor himself, was it? No. Henry's such a very busy man. You know Dr. Jekyll? Know him? Oh, we're close. <laughs> Very close, he and I. We share everything. Just as you and I do, my sweet Lucy. Everything. 
Leave this place, I beg you. Now, you were planning on leaving the city without saying no. goodbye first, were No, sir, I'm not going anywhere. That's right, Lucy, you're not going anywhere? No. Come to me now. Close. Closer. Sympathy. <laughs> Tenderness. <laughs> Warm. As the summer offer me oh. their embrace. <coughs> Friendliness. Gentleness. Strangers to my life. They are there in this faith. Goodness and sweetness and kindness and boundedness. Lost in the darkness, silence surrounds you. Once there was morning, now endless night. I will find the answer. I'll never desert you. I promise you this Till the day that I <laughs> Do you really think That I would never let you go? Do you think I never set you free? If you do, I'm sad to say It simply isn't so you will never get away from me. All that you are is a face in the mirror. I close my eyes and you'll disappear. I'm what you face when you face in the mirror. As long as you live, I will still be here. All that you are is the end of a nightmare. All that you are is a dying scream. After tonight, I shall end this demon dream. This is not a dream, my friend. And it will never end. This face is a nightmare that goes on. Hide is here to stay, no matter what you may pretend. And you'll flourish long after you're gone. Soon you will die and my silence will hide you. You cannot choose but to lose control. You can control me and live deep inside you. Each day you'll feel me devour your soul. I don't need you to survive, but you need me. I'll be your as you dance with death. And I rejoice as you breathe your final breath. For I'll live inside you forever. No, with Satan himself by my side. No, and I'll love him now and forever. He'll never be able to separate Jekyll from a heart. Can't you see it's a over now? It's time to die, know that I only you. If I die, you'll die too. You'll die in me, I'll be you. Damn you, hide, set me free. Can't you see, you are me. No, you're deep inside. I am you, you are hide. No, never, yes, forever. God damn you, hide. Take all your evil deeds and rot it out.
I'll see you there, Jekyll. Never! seen what lay beyond. Three. His search for the truth had come to nothing. He knew he must leave his father in his unending darkness. Yes. Back from the dead he came. To the sound of wedding bells. Ready to embrace the next. And we hope much happier chapter of his life. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. If any man can show any just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Henry John Albert Jekyll. Do you take this woman, Emma Pants, Margaret? <laughs> Oh God, what now? Oh God, not now. Help me somehow, please. Take the pain away. Fill it, fill me. This will kill me. Oh God, will me somehow to find my pray. Oh God, help me. God, have mercy. Don't let her see. No, no, no. What is there? Ah! Ah! <laughs> Ah, oh, Mistress Stride. I trust you respectfully recording the order of business. Oh, you must stop me, Dr. Jekyll! There is no Dr. Jekyll! There is only Edward Hyde. Touch his hand. No one, as she dies, before God. Emma. No one. God. Henry. Henry. 
I know that it is you. And you would never harm me. I beg you, set me free. Set us all free. I could not. Ah! Father. Forgive me. Oh, Emma. If I could have your attention one moment more before we begin the third act, I'd like to... No, no, not really. But if you would be comfortable, I'd like to tell you about a very special person. Thank you very much, Frank. I appreciate that. I want to read you something on the back of a CD. Aria Lambs is the daughter of Jeff Lambs, who was the musical director of the Civil War and Cat and the Kings here on Broadway. Now, Aria is seven years old and has been battling leukemia since she was three and a half. She underwent a bone marrow transplant last spring as a final attempt to rid her body of the cancer. Now on December 1st, uh, and her older brother Jordan was the donor. Now on December 1st, the Lambs 
family learned that Arius leukemia, leukemia had mutated. It had survived the transplant. Aria must have another transplant as soon as possible. Now this is a painful and prolonged process that most children do not survive. Aria is an inspiration to us all. Now on December 10th, right after they found out this information, the Broadway community gathered together and they recorded this CD. It's called For Aria, Love at Christmas Time. Now, it was a, it's a song especially written for Aria featuring a 40-piece orchestra of Broadway pit musicians and a Broadway community choir, which is mostly just Broadway stars. And, um, and all of the services from the singers lending their voices to the musicians playing their instruments to the music copying to the arrangement of the orchestrations to the design of the CD to the recording studio costs were donated free to help support ARIA. The proceeds from the sale of this CD benefit the ARIA Lambs Fund at Samaritan's Purse established to help ARIA and her family battle leukemia. Now it's funny around Christmas time you know we to me Christmas is about family and being together and the Broadway community is really a family, and you're part of that community because you're here experiencing the magic of live theater. So we ask you on the way out, if you'll reach into your hearts and donate $5 and get a wonderful, magical CD. We've got 500 of these today, and I know that there are more than 500 people here. So you can give them to your friends as Christmas gifts, but the money will go directly to help this brave little girl. So I ask you to join the cause, join the crusade, and help Aria. Thank you so much for coming today. Have a wonderful and safe, happy holidays. God bless you. You'll see my colleagues on the way out. Good night, everyone. <laughs>